Hey folks, it's Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak. We are here today to show you our beautiful line of 2022 solo canoes. So let's do it. Swift is a company of paddlers, and we've been very fortunate to have our roots at Algonquin Outfitters, a canoe trip outfitting company. And we've developed a relationship with an extraordinary designer, David Yost, and developed some beautiful solo boats. Let's show you them at, at large right now. It starts with our cruisers, our performance solos. There's three of them that we're gonna show you today. And then the meat of our lineup are our beautiful day paddling and touring canoes. The Kiwaden 14 and 15, and our pickup truck canoe, our most popular, the Prospector 14. So here is a Kiwaden 14 in Kevlar Fusion with a black and gold interior. The ruby finish on the outside. It's got our black and gold carbon Kevlar trim. The all cherry interior. This particular one also has the adjustable kayak foot brace as an option. And also our very cool multi-height pod seat system. Beautiful boat. The boat right next to it is the brother to the Kiwaden 14. This is the Kiwaden 15. This is a beautifully finished boat. Sapphire blue finish in Kevlar Fusion. It's got the champagne two-tone bottom on it with the Kevlar skid plates. The black and gold carbon Kevlar trim. And this has one of my favorite options for a solo canoe. This has the adjustable carbon foot bar on it. This is the standard fixed seat in all our solo canoes with the upper height pod position with the seat set at a position where you can either kneel or sit in. Now, these boats have an incredible design. David Yost, you're a genius. These particular boats are straighter keeled in the back end. They have a little bit more rocker forward, so the bow's a little bit more maneuverable than the stern. It also creates a little bit less wetted surface area that helps the boats glide a little bit nicer. They've got a very sleek shape, and if you look from the water line on down, they're very rounded in this particular area. This allows the waves, when they roll into them, they roll underneath the boat with less effect of pushing the boat around. A straighter cider, flatter, bottom boat, when the waves hit it, it really pushes, there's more energy trying to push the boat around. These boats are very comfortable in adverse conditions. Now David brought the bubble, the widest point, way up the side so you can really lean these boats very far over to the gunnel. And then look how much tumble home he's put onto this. This allows you when you're paddling solo to keep your paddling stroke right next to the side of your body so they're extremely efficient to paddle. These boats are absolutely beautiful. Now the Kiwaden 14 ideally suits a smaller paddler or a more skilled paddler that's larger that wants a real sprightly canoe. A boat they can really lean over when they want to turn a really good performance. The Kiwaden 15 really fits average size to bigger paddlers nicely. Someone wants to trip with a dog, a small child, fish tackle box. The Kiwaden 15 is a beautiful touring shape for that. So folks, people come in different sizes. Boats should come in different sizes. Brandon is 5'8", 5'9", 160 pounds. Yep. I'm about 6'3", 230, maybe 240. And uh, we're gonna show you the size differences and how this really works. Brandon is a great size for this particular boat. So Brandon, why don't you get in the boat and sit in it? So Brandon is our sales manager. Many of you folks will have talked to him on the phone or will be. And he's done a lot of canoeing in his life. He grew up right near our factory in South River. 
So he's adjusting the kayak foot braces. The seat is in the upper height position right now. And Brandon, that feels pretty good. Why don't you show the folks how narrow the paddling station is there? Like you can reach over the side really easy. So for someone Brandon's size, this is a really nice boat. Now, Brandon, let's show the folks how e easy it is to put your knees under. With our particular seating system, it's so easy to quickly put your legs under. And it's also, we angle the front bar forward so it doesn't dig into the back of your thighs at all. Time to go paddling, Brandon. All right. All right, it's my turn. So the Kiwaden 15 is a great size for me, and I love paddling this boat. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a couple things here. So this has the single height seat system, so I'm at the position that's very comfortable to canoe. I can use a kayak paddle very nicely from here as well. I really like the carbon foot bar in the Kiwaden 15 and the Prospector 14. And the reason is that when you paddle, you transmit your energy by pushing on your feet. So when you set your paddle in the water and you start rotating your body, you push on your feet. So you're pushing, your energy is pushing the boat forward. When you have the carbon foot bar, you can put your feet either right in the middle of the boat or on the sides or every now and then, depending on the direction the wind's coming from, I may move one foot on the middle and keep one on the side. On a narrower boat like the Kiwaden 14 or many of our pack boats, I'm very comfortable using the kayak foot braces. But if you're getting a Kiwaden 15, Prospector 14, consider the carbon foot bar. Now I'm pretty tall, but even with this boat, I can very comfortably put my knees under so I'll show you a position I like to paddle a lot in, and that is like this. I like to paddle with one leg forward and one knee down, especially if I'm crossing a really big lake, maybe in the boat for an hour or two, I really like the ability to move around. I find that the more comfortable you are in the boat, the better you're gonna feel, the less you're gonna have that feeling of, I gotta get the heck out of this thing. So this seating system, Kiwaden 14, Kiwaden 15, it feels just great. Here is our most popular solo canoe, the Prospector 14, the pickup truck of our solo boats. The canoe that has lots of volume to it, has so many different ways you can use it. This particular one right here is a carbon fusion with the beautiful carbon and negra H-weave on the outside and the inside. It's got the black and gold carbon Kevlar trim with the cherry interior, the optional kayak foot braces on it. And this particular one has our multi-height pod seat system. So let me show this to you. On the back of the bar, it's got magnets so it can pop up and down a little bit and it's got this very cool pin system in the front. The engineers, Matt and Terry at Swift, are, these guys are just geniuses. They've developed this really cool system. So if you turn it over, you see the magnets in the back here, the receptacles for the pins here. They put magnets on the inside of our side pods before they get adhered to the boat. And you see the pins themselves right here. Now the seat itself is super cool. It's not only curved like this, which many canoe seats in the industry are, but we've also angled the front bar forward. And if you look closely at this, there's between 11 and 14 plies on each crossbar, combination of cherry and maple, depending on which bar it is to give you optimum strength. Then the back bar is curved back nicely to give lots of room for larger folks with myself with their ample posteriors. Lots of comfort. So again, this quickly, let me show you. I'll put it in the lower height position first. 
What I always like to do is put the pins in, then drop the magnets back down again. And then again, I'm going to pop it out and put it into the upper seat position. Now, the last thing we install on all of our solo boats are these pins right in the middle of the boat, the pin receptacles. So that's right at the balance point. This is one of our solo canoe yokes. To put them on, you just lightly put on one side, then you put on the other, tighten them down. When you do this, folks, you're not Hercules. You just don't want to crank and crank and crank. Just get it snug. When you do flip the boat up and down, I always put my hands in the gunnels right next to the yoke rather than flipping it up by the yoke itself. So let's move over to this beauty right here. This Prospector 14 is in the Kevlar Fusion finish. It's got the beautiful black and gold airmed fabric on the inside. The outside of this one is emerald green. You can see the nice cloth finish on the clear coat. It's got the champagne two-tone finish on the bottom with the Kevlar skid plates, the bumper guards that we just bring a little bit over the two-tone line. Cherry interior on this one as well. And this one's got a couple other neat things. It's got the adjustable carbon foot bar. And this one has the universal mount package where there's different accessories, camera mounts, fish tackle mounts, GPSs that you can mount right on the boat either right in front of you, we put three across, or two across right in the back. This one has the multi-height seat system also. These both have the beautiful cherry interior. Gorgeous Prospector 14s. How about these two beautiful Prospector 14s? This one is carbon fusion with a beautiful carbon Negra H-weave on the outside black and gold carbon Kevlar trim. This has the black color skid plates, the bumper guards on the end of the boat. Beautiful finish. This one set up with some really neat options. It's got the adjustable carbon foot bar, the universal mount package on the carbon thwarts, and this has the multi-height pod seat system with our carbon detachable seat. Really cool looking setup. Let me show you a couple neat features that you can get with this boat. So you can either get the detachable yoke in all cherry, beautiful finish. These weigh about two and a half pounds. You can also get brand new this year, the detachable yoke in sassafras. This weighs a pound and a half. It's got a really cool finish. Not quite as strong as the Cherry, but for our solo canoes or our pack boats, it's a great yoke to have. Little bit more flexibility to it, but not much at all. Or you can get the carbon detachable yoke, which weighs about a pound and a half also that you see on this Prospector 14. Now let me show you another couple cool things. We're developing a really cool video, 2022 canoe and pack boat technology that you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out. We tell you all about our carbon canoe seats in that particular video, including how we put multiple layers of foam and we built a carbon I-beam right into the finish of the seat. And then, we also talk about how we've developed the technology to build our beautiful carbon yokes, handles, and thwarts. They're hollow parts. They're made much the way a monocube bike frame is made with two-piece aluminum mold coming down on them. So check out that 2022 technology video. Now this Prospector 14 is super cool. We call this the Sean James Special, My Self-Reliance, if you want to check out some of his videos. Now, this one is our Expedition Carbon Finish. It's got the beautiful basalt and negra on the inside with the co-mingle cloth on it. The brownish colors, the basalt. The white that you see inlaid right into it, the strands, is the negra. 
And then this has the black carbon finish on the outside. Also, it's got the black reflective stickers, which you barely see. If you flash light on it, though, they're super cool looking. This boat also has the adjustable carbon foot bar on it. It's got the universal mount package, the multi-height pod seat system. This boat is super cool setup. Which Prospector 14 is going to suit your needs the best? Hey folks, we have the ultimate Prospector 14 model here. Scott Way, who has done the Prospector 14 video. He's also our social media guru. Many of you communicate with him through Facebook, Twitter, and so on. So Scott is about 6'2", weighs about 240 pounds on a good day. And he fits the profile of this Prospector 14 very nicely. So Scott, show the folks how narrow the paddling station is for you right there. Like you don't have to reach very far out also. So much like our Kiwadens, the Prospector 14 actually has a beautiful waterline shape. It looks a little bit wider than the other boats, but right down at the waterline, it really is pretty sleek. When you take a stroke in this baby, it really moves. A lot of fullness above the waterline, so there's lots of volume in this boat to store lots of gear in it. It's, it's by far most multi-use boat. Someone has a fish tackle box in front of them, a small child, a dog. There's so many things you can do with this. Now, Scott, let's show the folks the kayak paddle also. Now, most people that get Prospector 14s take a canoe paddle and a kayak paddle with them. This one is adjustable in length and the pitch. I strongly recommend a Warner Bending Branches paddle like this. You can see how quickly Scott could adjust it. Now, some folks say, what do you do with a kayak paddle when you're not using it if you take both paddles? So, Scott, show the folks how easy it is to take apart. And you can just store it so easily like that. Prospector 14, average size to bigger guys, tripping, fishing. It's such an ultimate boat to use. In the lower seat position, you either want to use a very short canoe paddle or ideally one of the adjustable kayak paddles. 240 to 260, or for bigger people, some people even get the 260 to 280 adjustable. Scott is all set to go now. Here's a great option to get with your Prospector 14. This is the GCI sit-backer seat, which is on our web store, swiftoutside.com. Now, it's got a lot of padding to it. What we like about it is that it's got this metal frame so it won't slouch on you like many folding stadium chairs will do. It's got a little bit of lumbar support on it, a very thick pad. Some people use it in the upper height position. What it's most ideal for is when you get the multi-height pods and you use it in the lower seat position. So very quickly, I, I find it's easiest to put on when the seat's in the upper height position to get it centered properly. Now you're ready to go. Here's another beautiful boat. This is a Kiwaden 15, an Expedition Kevlar with a beautiful basalt and negra on the inside, the emerald green on the outside, black and gold carbon Kevlar trim, the champagne two-tone finish on it. What's unique about this Kiwaden 15 is it's actually not a solo canoe. This is a pack boat. It's got a really cool pack boat seat in it, which has a lot of padding. The seat back itself, the lumbar support is adjustable up and down. Very thick padding on the bottom. The seat really moves with you when you paddle. When you're not using it, you can just strap it right down to the boat like this. Tighten it up while you're traveling. When you go to use it, you just pop right into here. This works much like a backpack strap. You tuck this in, pull it up, and you don't want to crank it tight. You want to leave it loose where it's got some play to it. Now, what's neat about this, folks, 
is this seat is actually detachable and it's adjustable about eight inches. So it's on a track on the bottom. So what a lot of folks like about this is that in the Kiwaden 15 and the Kiwaden 14, you can get the single height canoe seat set up and you can get it detachable where the canoe seat will pop right out and then you can order the pack boat seat as an option. So if you're not sure whether you want the solo canoe or the comfortable pack seat, many folks choose this option where you get both and you literally get two canoes in one, Prospector 14 or Kiwaden 15. Here are three more super cool Swift solo canoes. The Cruiser 14.8, the Cruiser 15.8, the Cruiser 16.8. They all have the real comfortable bucket seat system on them. The Cruiser design series is for those people that really like to move when they paddle. David Yost has designed these and he's gone through different generations of boats of this nature and these are really fun to paddle. They've got a fair amount of rocker forward, very straight keeled in the back end, so they really track where you want them to go. When you get in windy, twisty streams, skilled paddlers learn how to lean them over a little bit to make the turns carve really nicely. Now, they've got what's called an S gunnel. So the gunnels actually bend twice on these. We can only do them with a carbon Kevlar trim finish. And they've got very narrow waterline stations like many of our boats. They've got a lot of roundness to the chine area with a fair amount of flare and volume above the waterline. But look how much tumble home these boats have on them. They're pulled in considerably more than our other canoes so that someone when they're paddling can really paddle with their paddle right next to their body for greater efficiency. If you like to paddle with bench shaft canoe paddles and you really want to cover a lot of ground, maybe you want an exercise type boat, and many folks also will use kayak paddles with these as well, these cruisers are the way to go. Here are two beautiful cruisers. A Cruiser 14.8 in carbon fusion with a beautiful carbon and negra on the outside. The apple green finish with matching stickers. And it's got the black and gold carbon Kevlar trim with all carbon interior. The baby right next to us, this beautiful boat is all carbon fusion. This is the carbon and negra H weave on both the inside and the outside. The black and gold carbon Kevlar trim. And again, the all carbon interior. And let's folks take a close look at this. This seat system, our engineers, Matt and Terry developed, and these guys are just whizzes at stuff like this. This is a beautiful carbon bucket seat, which fits a very wide variety of posteriors. We've got the nice padding on it. Some people put a little bit of extra padding on it that are gonna be using it quite a bit. This carbon box on the bottom has hollows in the ends. It allows for water to flow through it if necessary. There's room to put a drink holder. You can put a bottle right in front of you if you're a marathon racer and you want that set up. And it's also got a foot brake system that's directly connected to the bars and it moves with the seat and it's very adjustable. There's a lot of different positions. So you set your position and if you feel you're riding a little bit tail heavy, you just scoot forward and the whole system moves forward with you. It's a super cool setup. This particular boat, the 15.8, really suits an average size to larger paddler very nicely, especially if you're day paddling and you're not putting much gear in the boat. The Cruiser 14.8, this one will fit someone smaller. My friend Terry Kent, a marathon racer, his gale weighs 110 pounds. She loves this boat. It fits her beautifully. She's about 5'2". And then Brandon, our sales manager, he's about 160. He's kind of at the upper limit 
I can paddle in this boat at 230, 240, but I just feel I've got a little bit too much weight in it. Whereas in the 15.8 or 16.8, much better suited to me. So that's why we have the different sizes and the different fits for them. Here is our lovely Cruiser 14.8 with Brando. And Brando's gonna get in this baby, show you how easy it is, this beautiful seating system. So Brandon's 5.8, 5.9, 160 on a really good day. Yep. And he's gonna show us again just how easy it is for him to reach over the sides. The paddling station on these boats is just beautiful. And with the S-bend to the gunnel, when you set your blade in, you can really reach far out and really get a good stroke with these boats. The comfort of the seating system, Brandon's in, when you lean over to the side a little bit, the, that bucket seat really holds you in place nicely. You've got so much comfort. If you're doing some windy, twisty creeks and you really want to lean the boat. Now, Brandon, let's show the kayak paddle. Someone your size in the 14.8, Gets a little windy using the kayak paddle and Brandon probably 240 to 250 would be a nice length. Having that adjustable length paddle is a big bonus. For someone Brandon's size, the Cruiser 14.8, what a beautiful boat to paddle. So Prospector Scott is also the ideal size for the Cruiser 15.8. 6'2", 220, 230. I generally, I find people 180 up to 240 really like the feel of this boat for day paddling, day cruising. And Scott, show folks just how narrow the paddling position is there. You can really get a good stroke close to the side of the boat there. It's, it's quite lovely. And then what most people do paddling with the bench half paddle is they'll get five to seven strokes per side and switch sides. And the blades are so short and they're so light, it's so easy to do that. You can do a slight correction stroke, a C stroke, or a little bit of a J. Switching sides is what a lot of people get in the habit of. Scott, let's show the folks the kayak paddle also. Even though this boat has the canoe seat set up in it, I love using the kayak paddle. Someone Scott's size would probably want to get a 240 to 260 adjustable paddle. And it's really, because it, it tracks so nicely when you use a kayak paddle, you can just motor in this boat. It's really fun to paddle on a windy, wavy day with a kayak paddle. Now, Scott, let's show the folks how easy it is to adjust the, the length for your feet right now. The foot brace system. So... Very easy, folks. We've made this system that if you want to, really easy. Now, Scott, hold on to the gunnels of the boat a little bit and show the people if you scooch up how the whole system will move for you. So just like that, once you get it set up, you really learn versatility. Sometimes when you're windy, twisty, stream, I like to run the bow down a little bit. I find it easier to go around the corners. Sometimes on the open lakes, I might keep it a little bit tail heavy. What we used to do all the time in marathon canoe racing is we'd put a little water in the boat and we would see where it flowed in the boat until we found the real right balance point. And we kept our seat pretty much in that position from that point on and then adjusted it as need be depending on river, lake conditions. So Scott's ideally suited in the 15.8. Hey folks, I'm in my baby now. This is a Cruiser 16.8 in carbon fusion. It's got the black carbon outer finish and it's got those really cool black reflective stickers on it. This is the Cruiser that at 6'3", 6'4", 240 pounds that I really want. The reason is my cottage is boat access. I don't own a motorboat. Whenever I go to it, I paddle in. And when I go by myself, I can take this boat and I can put about another 100 pounds of gear in it. You could safely put up to about 400 pounds in this, the same as the Prospector 14. I can put a big cooler in it, a couple packs, and it's still got enough volume for that. But then when I'm just day cruising 
This is the original size and shape as the Marathon Racing Canoe that Terry Kent won the U.S. Nationals in. Just a beautiful feeling boat. Right next to it, I've got the Cruiser 15.8, and I've got them lined up pen to pen here. So you can see how the 16.8 is a bit deeper. The bubble is carried up higher. There's more volume in the ends above the water line. So really good volume. It's super seaworthy also. I take this out in Algonquin Park and do all kinds of conditions. I actually really like it with all of these cruisers. On windy, wavy days, these boats are really fun to paddle in. You can really cruise through the waves nicely, and then the, the flare above the waterline really pushes the waves out to the side and away from the boat. Now, when I paddle, I primarily use a bent shaft single blade canoe paddle. So, just like Scott and Brandon showed you, very comfortable paddling right along the side of the boat. Very narrow paddling station. When you paddle and you really want to lean on the paddle, you, when you set your paddle, you really drive with one of your feet and you just put your weight on the paddle. It's so narrow right here that it really allows you to transmit your power and your energy forward nicely. Now, if it's a really windy day and I feel like I'm not really tracking in the direction that I want to well, I love using the adjustable paddle that we've showed you. So what I often do is I'll adjust it so that when I'm paddling, the water drips from the drip ring outside of the boat. For me, a 240 to 260, this is a Werner paddle, bending branches makes a nice one just like this. So I can adjust the length and the pitch of the paddle very nicely with this. When I do day trips in Algonquin Park, I'll take both paddles with me. And I've got it set up where I just have some strings. My friend Tom uses bungee cords. So when we do the portages, I have the kayak paddle just underneath the gunnel on one side, and I put my canoe paddle just on the other side and put the yoke on so I can very quickly do the portage with a small pack and one carry. Sometimes we'll do eight, 10, 12 lakes in a day just on a fun day paddle. I'm dreaming of that now. It's February. It was minus 31 this morning. We need those beautiful warm summer days when we can all go out paddling, all in our nice solo canoes. For me, it's the Cruiser 16.8. Lots of folks ask us, how much gear can you put in the different solo canoes that we have? Many different sized people, that's gonna have a little bit of effect on it. Generally speaking, the Kiwaden 14, people will take up to about 40, 50 pounds of extra gear in the boat. The Kiwaden 15, the Prospector 14, you can load these guys up more. You could take 50, 60 pounds of gear. You could take a 80 pound dog with you very easily. The 16-8 Cruiser, this baby you can really load up like crazy. Now an I solo trip, I like taking the Algonquin Outfitter soft packs. They're really big and I take everything. I take the thickest sleeping pad you can get on the market. And now that I'm in my 50s, I even take a pillow on trips. I like to sleep in comfort. What I like to do is I, I bring a dry bag and I put the heaviest stuff in this right at the top of my pack. So when I start my trips, what I'll do is I'll take the dry bag out of the pack. I'll put the pack right behind me, and then I'll put the dry bag right in front of me. And if I'm feeling then that I'm still riding a little tail heavy, I move the dry bag a little bit further in front of me. So you can adjust the weight. You can keep the weight more balanced in the water. The way David Yost designed these boats, when you're right in the middle sitting position, you're right at the pivot point of the boat. It's right in the spot that you really want to be. You don't want to move way forward or way back. So by splitting your load, 
putting a bunch behind you close and then putting a little bit more in front of you, you can stay balanced really nicely. Which one is going to suit your needs the best? We've got a team of people here that can answer your questions. You can call 1-800-661-1429. We also have some other great videos that you want to watch. We've got a 2022 technology video coming out soon. We've got a 2022 canoe, pack boat, trim system, and option video that you're going to want to see where we go through all our laminates in greater detail, our trim systems in greater details, our options in greater details. And then if you're not quite sure whether you want a solo canoe or perhaps a pack boat, definitely check out our 2022 pack boat video. Whichever one of these babies that you're going to choose, you're going to love it. Cheers.